Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Hey boo, how are you doing? How's my favorite ingredient whore? If you clicked on this video, it means that you are a skincare junkie. I'm sorry, there's just no way around it. The first step in recovery is admitting you have a problem. It's okay, I'm here for you. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the ordinary and the inky list and telling you which one I think is better. And this is really hard for me because I love both brands. But I saw a bunch of you guys commenting this idea and I'm actually really grateful you did because when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, that's so creative. Why have I not thought of that before? So here we are, bitch. The Ordinary and the Inky List are brands that you really need to know your shit when it comes to skincare. I remember the first time I came across the Ordinary and I was like, what language is this? Not English, that's for damn sure. But I've been seeing both Ordinary and the Inky List getting a lot more popular. And if you've watched any of my videos on my channel, I'm constantly recommending products from each brand because of how affordable they are. I know a lot of you guys who are watching and considering the time right now and everything that's going on in the world, some of you guys may not be wanting to spend a lot of money on your skincare. And that's where I think the Ordinary and the Inky List can provide some great formulas. But which is better? Which is the brand that you should go with? We will answer that question on today's episode of Hiram Rambles On About Skincare for way too long. Episode two fucking many. <laughs> so let's get into it. Now I'll first be going through all the best selling products and comparing which one is better. First by ingredients, because ingredients don't lie, bitch. You know this, you recited it with me. And second by my personal experience, which I also think is important in providing context as to which I think is better. And then at the end, I'll compare the two lines from a brand standpoint and then give you my final thoughts on which I think is better. So let's get into it. So dabbling right in, let's just hit it with a heavy one, niacinamide. You guys know niacinamide is one of my favorite ingredients in the world because it treats so many different products problems in the skin, whether it be redness and sensitivity, dark spots and hyperpigmentation, or controlling oiliness in the skin, it is an incredible ingredient. And I would venture to say that the Ordinary's Niacinamide Serum is one of the most popular sellers from their brand. But the Inky List also has a Niacinamide Serum and I've been able to try both. From an ingredient standpoint, the Inky List Niacinamide Serum is better. In addition to Niacinamide, it has a lot of really incredible ingredients like radish root ferment, which will soothe sensitivity, squalane, which is going to really hydrate the skin, sodium hyaluronate, a concentrated form of hyaluronic acid, soybean oil, which will nourish the skin, and phospholipids, which will help to retain moisture in the skin. Not gonna lie, when I first saw this ingredient list, I was instantly impressed because these are pretty much the same price point, but the ingredients in this one are far superior to the ones that The Ordinary has. However, from my personal experience, I would say that The Ordinary one is better because it's more lightweight, it feels like it sinks into the skin easier, and more optimal for people who have combination to oily skin, while the Niacinamide Serum, because of all those other beneficial ingredients, has a more hydrating, thicker, consistency and feels like a heavier layer on the surface of your skin. While The Ordinary doesn't have as many impressive ingredients, it's still doing what it's supposed to do, providing niacinamide with no fancy extra ingredients and a perfect addition to a routine. For me, I think The Ordinary one is better, but it depends on your personal skin type. I would say the Inkyless niacinamide one is great if you have dry to normal skin, and The Ordinary one is great if you have combination to oily skin. Hi. It is midnight as I'm editing this video to go up tomorrow morning, but I totally forgot to mention that if you guys are interested in purchasing any of the products that I talk about in today's video, because bitch, there's a lot of them. And a lot of them I absolutely mwah, love. Feel free to use the links in the description box below. I make a small commission that helps to support me and my channel off of some of them, and I would really appreciate if you do feel like shopping any of these products, but no pressure whatsoever. As always, it's totally up to you. They're just there for you if you do want to use them. Thanks, guys. Next up is retinol, which is something The Ordinary definitely claims the title to in terms of popularity because everyone talks about the Ordinary Retinol Serums and how incredible they are. But from an ingredient standpoint, which one is better? If you don't know retinol, it is an incredible and one of the most researched ingredients out there. It's amazing because it repairs multiple types of damage within the skin, whether in the past you've had acne scars, hyperpigmentation, fine lines and aging, sun damage. It treats so many different issues and while it's very powerful, it can be very effective for reversing a lot of issues in the skin. Now this one is tricky because The Ordinary has multiple types of retinol products. I believe in total four. All of them are at different concentrations as opposed to the Inky List one which only has one retinol. And I have to say from an ingredient standpoint it depends on which retinol you choose. Now if you're talking about the retinol 0.5% in squalane which I know this technically isn't the bottle but I can't fucking find it anywhere even though I used it for months in the hundreds of skincare pieces laying around my house. We're just gonna pretend like this is it, okay? Okay. I would venture to say that they are a tie. The Inky List claims to be 1% retinol but it's actually 0.5% retinol and 0.5% hydroxypinacolone retinoate. Pronunciation expert over here. That ingredient is actually an ester of retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is extremely powerful in its anti-aging and repairing abilities, but this specific ingredient doesn't have the
have the same level of research that standard retinol has. You can't truly know how effective it's going to be, which is why I would say these are a tie. However, in terms of overall, I would say the Ordinary is better because of how many options they have. They're suited for a variety of skin types, whether it's someone who's just barely starting into retinol versus someone who is very experienced and can handle a high percentage. The Ordinary offers so many options because when it comes to something like retinol, that is a tricky ass bitch ingredient. It can cause a lot of sensitivity if you're not careful and especially if you're not used to it. Whew, the first time you use retinol is rough. But from an experience standpoint, I personally like the Inkyless Retinol more. I don't know why, but when I've used the Ordinary Retinols in the past, while they're effective, they don't feel very easy to apply. This one is based in Squalane, which kind of makes it runny and almost like it sinks into your skin so quickly that you don't have time to evenly spread it out and make sure that you're not overexposing your skin to retinol. As opposed to this serum by the Inky List, much easier to spread, does not feel heavy on the face, is very effective but non-sensitizing. And that's why I think this is a great introductory retinol while the Ordinary provides some more powerful retinol products. Next up is Hyaluronic Acid, arguably two of the most popular products from both lines. So the Hyaluronic Acid is a very popular ingredient because it's a humectant and it draws in moisture from the air into your skin, which helps to hydrate and condition and plump it. I personally have only tried the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid Serum. From an ingredient standpoint, I say both brands tied. The Inky List Hyaluronic Acid has an awesome ingredient list with peptides to help soothe and plump the skin, glycerin, which is another humectant to draw in moisture, and radish root ferment. But the Ordinary has algae extract, which is great for hydrating the skin, and propanediol, a good hydrating agent. Now, I personally have only used the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid Serum, and the reason for this is because hyaluronic acid is one of those ingredients that I definitely like and I like seeing in products, but I wouldn't go out of my way most of the time to go out and buy specifically a hyaluronic acid serum. I have combination to oily skin, so usually my primary concern is not trying to get a lot of moisture into the skin, it's trying to keep my face from looking like a grease factory all day. Is that too much to ask? Which is why from my personal experience, I can only speak for the Inky List one, which was a good experience. I definitely enjoyed it. I think it's great for anyone who does want to harness the power of hyaluronic acid, but it's not something I would go out of my way to use. Next up, vitamin C. Vitamin C has a lot of benefits to it. Not only can it brighten hyperpigmentation and dark spots in the face, but it also helps to protect against free radical damage throughout the day, which increases aging, spots, dryness, and a bunch of other issues. And while a very unstable ingredient, when it's put in a stable formula, it can be very effective and treat a lot of issues in the skin. Now, both the Inky List and the Ordinary have the highest concentrations that I've ever seen of vitamin C in a product. 30%. Most products that advertise vitamin C on the outside, you're lucky if you have even 5%. As soon as I got both of these, I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be a wild ride, y'all. For superior ingredients, I would say the Ordinary takes the lead. It's a water-free formula, which is amazing considering that water usually accelerates the expiration and turning of the formula, which is the main reason that I'm not a fan of vitamin C. It goes bad really quickly. It also has squalane, coconut alkanes, which are gonna be great for hydrating and moisturizing the skin, and sodium hyaluronate. But for my personal experience, I personally preferred the Inky List Vitamin C Serum. This one felt so lightweight on the skin, and sometimes I can have a little bit of a sensitivity to vitamin C. For some reason, my skin will choose a random week out of the month and be like, you know what, Hiram, this week we're gonna make you burn the fuck up every time you even come close to vitamin C, just for fun, because why not? But I've never once had an issue with this one, and considering that it is such a high percentage and to never have experienced a sensitivity ever, that's really impressive to me. Also, the ingredient list is very short, which is something I personally like to see because I don't want any ingredients messing with the formula and potentially turning it bad really quickly. Now we have glycolic acid. Glycolic acid is an incredible ingredient because it's an alpha hydroxy acid and AHAs dissolve all the dead skin cells off of the surface of your skin, which is not only going to make your skin glowy, healthy, hydrated, but it's one of the smallest molecular exfoliants, which means it can get really deep into your skin to really take care of a lot of dead skin cells. And it's a humectant, meaning that it'll draw in moisture from the environment into your skin. From an ingredient standpoint, I have to say the Ordinary one is better. Now I've talked about this in my Ordinary video about how I didn't like this product specifically because the primary ingredients it has are glycerin as well as a bunch of different amino acids which are really great for supporting the health of the skin. A bunch of good antioxidant rich plant extracts and ginseng extract which is a very high quality ingredient that is hard to find in a lot of lower price point products so I was definitely impressed to see that. However, if you've heard me talk about this product in my videos before, it is unfortunate because I had 
had a horrific reaction to this product. The second I put it on my face, my skin was burning like crazy. I tried, I believe this product two times in total and just had to give it to someone else because my skin reacted so badly to it. And that's also why I have to say from my personal experience, the Inky List one is definitely better because it didn't burn my skin. My skin didn't have a negative reaction to it, but it was still effective for exfoliating the face. And I can use this a good two times a week and see great results without any sensitivity. And funny enough, I'm starting to like the Inky List more and more for their exfoliating products because they offer a wide variety of different types of exfoliants. While the Ordinary is pretty much limited to glycolic acid, lactic acid, and salicylic acid, all of which are amazing for the skin, but I find the Inky List has some more innovative and non-sensitizing formulas and just a better selection. Now for cleansers, both lines have cleansers, but the Ordinary pretty much only has one, which is their squalane cleanser, which is one I have yet to buy. And the Inky List has three different cleansers that I know of, one of which is the salicylic acid cleanser that I constantly am talking about in my videos because of how effective and good it is. But they also have their oat cleansing balm and their double oil and water cleanser. From an ingredient standpoint, I have to say all the way, the Inky List rules this category. Not only do they offer multiple types of cleansers, they kind of cover it all. There's a cleansing balm to remove makeup, the oil and water cleanser to remove any additional oil and cleanse the skin, and their standard salicylic acid cleanser for anyone who does have acne or breakouts. While The Ordinary has their one squalane cleanser. And from an experience standpoint, I personally have only tried the Inky List cleansers, and I love the oat cleansing balms. I will be talking about this in more videos coming up because this one is freaking incredible for removing sunscreen, oil, and dirt from the face. But the reason why I didn't get the Ordinary cleanser was because I heard from so many people that the experience was just not good, that it wasn't a cleanser that was worth it, and it doesn't clean your skin enough. So because of that, I just never ended up purchasing it because I'm not going to waste the packaging and money on a product that everyone I've asked said didn't like it. So I have to say the Inky List definitely wins this category. Up next are moisturizers, a critical part of the skincare routine. Now both lines offer moisturizers, but one brand stands out in the product selection and ingredient formulas, the Inky List. The Inky List moisturizers are really where I feel the brand just shines through. To name just a few of the ones I like, they have their Hemp Moisturizer, which is good for reducing redness. They have their Snow Mushroom Moisturizer, which is great for reducing sensitivity. They have their Multibiotic Moisturizer, which is a recent find, which I think is great for helping the healthy bacteria count on your skin. And they have a bunch of others as well. And looking at these ingredient lists, they are very well-rounded products. They have the necessary occlusive agents to hold in trans epidermal water loss, which is the basic function of a moisturizer, making sure that your skin doesn't get dry. They're just just complex enough to be really good formulas, but still simple enough to not be excessive or over the top. The Ordinary, from what I've seen, has their one moisturizer, which is the Natural Moisturizing Factors. I've talked about this in the Best Skincare Under $10. This is a great moisturizer, it's definitely good, but in comparison to the Inky List, it just doesn't hold a match. Hold a match? Hold a flame? Hold a candle? I'm not good with that shit. It just doesn't compare to the formulas that the Inky List offers. And from my personal experience using multiple moisturizers from the Inky List, the feel, texture, results are so much better than what I saw with The Ordinary. And then the final category, exfoliating masks. If you guys have watched literally any of my videos, any single video, you will see me talk about this exfoliating mask from The Ordinary. It is their 30% AHA and 2% BHA solution. I love this mask because of the instant results that it gives, but still a non-sensitizing effect. But the Inky List recently came out with their apple cider vinegar peel, which I would say is definitely very similar to the Ordinary Mask, but which exfoliating mask is better? From an ingredient standpoint, I have to say the Ordinary definitely takes the lead. It combines multiple AHAs to offer powerful instant exfoliation, but it also has the highest concentration of BHA or salicylic acid that you can get in a product, which really helps to declog pores and reduce oiliness in the face. The ingredient list is simple, straightforward, only with the active ingredients, and it gives you what you want. And from an experience, standpoint, I have to say the Ordinary One definitely takes the lead as well. I liked my experience with the Inky List. I felt like this was very gentle and gave you a very, very light exfoliation effect. But when I use an exfoliating mask, I want that shit to make me look like I just came out of the womb. Fresh baby glowy skin. Oh my god, I didn't even think this is red coming out of the womb. Anyway, <laughs> I did not mean it that way. <laughs> I want my skin to be super clear, super glowy, and The Ordinary always comes through with that, way more so than the Inky List one. Now that we've gone through all the main products, let me compare from a brand standpoint which pointers I think are better for each line. For sensitivities and avoiding irritating ingredients, both brands are a tie. Honestly, both brands are fragrance-free. They formulate with incredible ingredients, all of which I would consider to be non-irritating and very effective for the skin. Honestly, their philosophy is nearly identical. And in terms of product selection, having a bunch of different options to choose from, I think the Inky List takes the win. They show that within every category, whether it's cleansing, serum, treatment, moisturizing, they offer so many different options for multiple skin types, which I think is important because it allows a wider customer base to have access to your products. 
and none of them are low quality. While The Ordinary definitely has an impressive product selection as well, it seems that they tend to focus more so on the treatments, serums, exfoliants, and retinols rather than covering the other categories as well. In terms of stability, meaning that the products give you the results that you want every time without fail, the Inkey List also takes the lead. One of my main critiques of The Ordinary is that with a lot of products and when they make new batch orders, there tends to be differences in the formulas which affect people's skin. Sometimes people will buy a serum from The Ordinary and will love it and then they buy another one and don't see the same results at all. And even though the Inkey List is new, I have yet to see one report of this, whereas with The Ordinary, this is a pretty common thing that most people have just accepted as the cost of buying an Ordinary product. From a supplemental approach, which is where you just want a good product, gives you the treatment that you want and that's it, and can be easily added onto a skincare routine, The Ordinary takes the lead. They have very minimal ingredient lists, which prove that it'll be a benefit to adding it to your already existing skincare routine because you don't need moisturizing or conditioning agents or any of the other things that a cleanser or a moisturizer would provide. You just need the treatment and that's it. From a brand education standpoint, because let's face it, the first time you ever discovered the Inkey List or the Ordinary, you were like, what does this mean? I would say the Inkey List definitely wins in that category. Sometimes I feel like with the Ordinary, they're a little bit too ambitious in the information that they provide to customers that it confuses a lot of the customer base. While the Inkey List is very straightforward and still manages to use innovative ingredients, but make it easy to explain. And with their packaging updates, they've actually put on the inside of each of their boxes more information about the ingredients, the products, how to use it, which is something I really appreciate appreciate when it comes to these really complicated topics. From a price point standpoint, while they're very, very similar, I would say The Ordinary offers the cheapest selection. Their products are technically cheaper than the Inkey list, but again, it depends on the individual product because they're so similar and they're pretty much the same price point overall. And from an ethics standpoint, I would say they're about a tie. One reason I love The Ordinary is because they use glass packaging, which can be recycled an infinite amount of times, as opposed to plastic packaging, which yes, can be recycled, but only a maximum of three to four times before it ends up in a land. Fill. But The Ordinary, I know for certain, has personal relationships with each one of their ingredient suppliers, which is something you rarely find in this industry. The majority of people who want to create a skincare line go to a lab. They say, hey, I want to make this product. And the lab says, okay, these are the ingredients we have. The company takes their pick, the lab creates it, and it's done. And there's no additional information about where are these ingredients coming from? How are they sourced? Are they ethically sourced? Are the people that are sourcing these ingredients being fairly treated? Is it being sustainably extracted? There's no information because it's all from the lab, but the Inkey List has a relationship with each one of their individual suppliers, which means that they are much more aware of what's going on behind the scenes, which means overall a dramatic increase in ethics. And being that The Ordinary was purchased by Estee Lauder, there is question as to how ethical the brand is being behind the scenes. Okay, now for my final decision, which company I think is better than the other, the finale. I have to say guys, it's honestly a tie for me. It depends on what you personally want for your skincare routine. The Ordinary, I think, is an incredible brand for supplemental skincare. Skincare products where you want a treatment, but you don't need anything fancy, you don't need anything excessive, they're great to add into your already existent skincare routine. But if you're someone who wants to create a skincare routine from scratch and start with the basics, like a cleanser, moisturizer, serum, the Inculus definitely provides more well-rounded, stable products that are meant to be used on their own as opposed to alongside other products. It really just depends on what you're looking for. And I know that may seem like a disappointment, like you waited all this time to hear which was actually better than the other, but this is the reason why I recommend both on my channel and I love both brands so much. They both have different positive aspects, whether it be from an ingredient standpoint, how the products feel, or from an overall brand view. Each one has a lot of benefits, which is why I love both of them so much, and is why I'm confident recommending both of them to you to make your own decision. In the past, not gonna lie, I've always been an ordinary ride or die type of person, but as I've become more familiar with the Inkey List and more products come out, I am starting to enjoy the Inkey List even more and more, but still have yet to decide which one is truly better than the other. So the decision is up to you. Which do you like better? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to hear your thoughts of which brand you think is better. I want to hear your opinions and which one you think is better. Did I miss any points in this video that you also want to highlight? Feel free to let me know. I love hearing your guys' constructive feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my second YouTube channel called Selfless, where it's focused on empowering you to make a positive difference in the world right now from your phone. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.